back to Whiteboard Wednesday. Mike Cromwell, Brian Duvall, and we're here today to talk about the next step in a series uh, where we're talking about project management and the importance of project management for the success of any technical implementation for a business. And at this point, we're now in the, the fourth tenant of the eight tenants of a successful project management plan. And this week, Brian, we're going to talk about resource leveling and control. So first off, before we get into it, what does that mean? And uh, then walk us through the steps and why it's an important component that should know going into a project plan. So resources help obviously help us get the project accomplished. When we say resources, the first thing we think about is people. And that's certainly one aspect of it. But it could be systems. It could be processes. It could be facilities. It could be assets in terms of um, you know, servers or infrastructure or things like that that help us implement technology projects. And so what we're doing when we're doing resource leveling is we're, we're reviewing our performance to date and we're determining if we have an adequate amount of resources. Again, people, assets, facilities, all those things that can be included in that group of resources in order to finish the project on time and on budget. That's what we're talking about. So, it, so it's iterative or fluid, dependent it upon is. where you are in the project, and you can flex staff based on what the needs of the project are. Correct. Right. And so, and you may, and, and I'll give you an example in a minute when we go through this. But you know, really, when we start to measure activity against the project, we're talking about you know what's the level of activity that's that's being done, right? So, see, in the in the the middle of a project, the activity level is going to be very high, right? and the level of engagement, the number of people that are involved is gonna be very high. And in that case, we're looking at performance to budget because those people have an hourly cost, right? In some cases, that's something we're trying to manage against, right? But we also wanna look at performance to schedule. You know, as you and I've talked about a lot, you know, the difference between importance and urgency comes into play here a right. lot. So our performance to schedule may be more important than our performance to budget. So if I've got a hard deadline, you know, say in an acquisition or something I'm, I'm trying to, to meet a timeline against, then maybe my budget can flex a little bit so I can add a resource at an hourly cost into the middle of the project to speed it up, right? Or to make sure we hit our timeline. And so those are all important attributes of, of resource leveling. And, and really what we're talking about is adding, removing, or changing, you know, people, process, or assets involved in, in that resource pool. So that, that begs the question. If you're an enterprise considering, uh, you name the project, uh, you, IT managed service, SD-WAN, UCAS, contact center, you name right, it, right? right? How important is it then to consider the size of the project management staff on this front? Because what happens if you're, you're an enterprise, you're looking at going with an MSP that's got one project manager. And I guess one of the advantages that, you're, that you have with your team is, You've got the ability to move resources around, so it's it's the it's the benefit of scale. Sure, is that an accurate assessment? It is. It is absolutely. And and you may find that when you're looking at performance to schedule, as the PMO or the project management office may have a role at a high level, but then there may be an engineering team, and that engineering team may be led by a primary engineer that is responsible for adhering to that schedule mostly. So you've got tiers of ways that you can manage these these resources within that project team. And how often are you looking at this? You should be looking at this a couple times a week. You know, you really, you, you're trying to adhere to the schedule and the budget or the, the two main deliverables there. So if you're adjusting any, any, any more frequently than that, then it's probably a little bit of a knee-jerk reaction. You know, sometimes you've got to make your adjustments and then give them time to propagate. Well, I'm curious because Netrio right now has several large projects in the pipeline. So how often the last few weeks have you been looking at this? I'll admit I've been looking at it <laughs> several times a day, but, but, but not with the magnifying glass that I would if I'm going to make a whole lot of change. Well, kudos to you because I've been in businesses before where there's an influx of demand. Right. And what you see is, a, is, a, is an elongated delivery interval and your team uh, appears to have not missed a beat. So there again, value of having this as a key tenant to your project management plan. So, Great point. So there you have it, folks. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for next week. We're going to go continue to go through the eight tenets of project management.